Having a proper O of 1 set data structure is critical for high performance computing and it didn't get added to JavaScript till after JavaScript had already exploded in popularity. Fortunately, now that we have this built-in set class, it makes trivial work of a number of popular programming interview questions. We simply create a new instance of the set by using the set constructor with a new operator. A set has a number of features and we can add new items to the set by using the add function. So if we add 5, the set has a single item which is the number 5. We can add another item, for example 1, and now the set has two items, the number 5 and the number 1. A set only stores unique items. Internally, it does that by using hashing and sets can quickly see in constant time if a particular value already exists in the set and if not, it adds that to the set. So if we add the number 5 to the set, it will see that it already has 5 present within it and it will not add it again. This high performance lookup and deduplication is the key reason for the existence of the set data structure. In addition to adding items using the add method, we can also pass an iterable to the constructor of the set and the set automatically adds all of those items by iterating over the input. In the array that we are passing right now, there are only two unique strings, hola and mundo, and those are the only two values that will be present within the set. Notice that the set constructor accepts any iterables, which means that in addition to arrays, we can pass it anything else. For example, we know that within JavaScript, strings are also iterables, so we can even pass in a string if we wanted to. And of course, it will iterate over the different characters within the string, and again ensure that only unique values get added. Notice that within the string hello, the character L appears twice, but it will exist only once within the character's set. Just like any other JavaScript class, we can check if a particular value is an instance of the set class by using the instance of operator. And over here, the values, numbers, messages, and characters are all an instance of set. We've seen that the set data structure accepts iterables in the constructor, but what's worth noting is that the set itself is also an iterable. Let's create a set that consists of three strings, John, Jane, and Jack. Because the set is an iterable, we can use it anywhere else we can use an iterable within JavaScript. For example, with the for off loop, if we loop through the people set, we get back the individual strings, John, Jane, and Jack. Additionally, just like any other iterable, we can spread the set into a JavaScript array. And of course, in this particular case, we will get back an array that contains the three strings that we put in the set. Because the set constructor accepts an iterable and the set itself is also iterable, it makes it a trivial task to create a copy of a set. We can simply take a set and pass it to the set constructor to create a copy. Since people copy is a copy of the original set, any mutations that we make to the people copy will of course be only in the people copy. So here we are adding Jill to the people copy. And of course it's present in people copy, but not present in the original people set. A little known fact, particular to JavaScript and different from other programming languages, is that the JavaScript set guarantees that it will maintain insertion order. So if we create a set with the array pizza and ice cream, it will have the items pizza and ice cream in that order. If however, we create a set with ice cream and then pizza, then again, the order will be different. And we can demonstrate this preservation of insertion order. If we convert the set back to an array, the items will display in the order that they were added to in the original set. This is actually great because order is significant for arrays and it allows for an easy conversion of an array into a set to remove any duplications and then a conversion back to the array while preserving the order of the items. To demonstrate this, consider the example that we've received missed calls from Jane, then Jack, then Jane, and then Jill. We should only call back the individuals only once. However, we want to call them back in the order that they called us. So we really want to only call Jane once, then Jack, and then Jill. We can find the unique callers so that we can call them back in the correct order quite easily by simply taking the array, passing it through a set to only get the unique items, and then converting it back to an array with a simple spread operator. So here we get the answer that we are looking for. We need to call back Jane, then Jack, and then Jill. And as an aside, we might not even need to call Jill because when we will call Jack, he'll probably tell us that they went up a hill. The JavaScript set is a pretty easy data structure to master because it only has a handful of properties and methods. We already know that the set constructor takes any iterables. For example, here we are passing an array of the spices, nutmeg and ginger, and we can add more items by using the add method. And now we have the set that has nutmeg, ginger and cumin. There is a method that is the opposite of add and we can remove items from the set by using the delete method. 
This method also returns true if the item was present within the set. So now that we have deleted Ginger, if we run it again, this time it will return false because Ginger was no longer present within the set. Sets also come with the has method that tells you if an item is present within the set or not. For example, here the set does have cumin. However, since we've removed Ginger, Ginger is not present within the spices. So right now the set only has two spices, which are nutmeg and cumin, and we can check how many items are present within the set by using the size property. Of course, since there are two items, size will be the numeric too. Sets also come with the clear method, which removes all the items from the set. And of course, once the set is empty, the size will turn to zero. Let's run through a simple example to prove that using the set data structure is truly more performant than raw arrays and get some understanding of how stark the difference really is between O of 1 for sets and O of n for arrays. Let's consider the simple task of removing duplicates from a given input array. To start off, we will create an array that will consist of 10,000 items. We create an array of 10,000 items and ensure that there will be some duplicates around half of them by creating numbers that will be in the range 0 to 10,000 divided by 2. Let's measure the time of removing the duplicates from this input, first by using just plain arrays and then by using sets. With arrays, we create an output array and then simply loop through the input items and each time we check if it is not already present within the array by using index of. And if index of is minus 1, meaning that the item is not already in the array, then we simply push it into the end of the output. We are going to time it using JavaScript's built-in methods console.time and console.timeend. Now let's repeat the same process, but this time by using a set. And as we know, we can remove duplicates from an input array by simply creating a set from that array and then converting that set back to an array by using the spread operator. If our algorithm is correct, then the result of using an array and the result of using the set should result in the same number of items. So we will simply log out the length of the array output as well as the length of the set output. And now for the moment of truth, let's run this code to see what are the results from the array versus the results from the set. As we can see, they both contain the same number of items. However, the array took around 11 milliseconds and the set was done within one millisecond. Now with 10,000 items, even though the time difference is still quite large, 11 milliseconds doesn't feel like a big deal. So let's just bump it up to 100,000. You can take a moment to guess how much of a difference it will have. Because every time we add a new item, the array has to look at all the existing items, the difference will be quite significant. If we run the code, you can see in the output that the array takes around one second, whereas the set is still done within four milliseconds. The difference between a second and four milliseconds is the difference between a responsive and an unresponsive application. The key motivation for using the set data structure is its O of 1 item addition and lookup. And this has a number of real world high performance use cases like removing duplicates and finding repeated items. To demonstrate some applications, we create a simple array that has characters A, B and C where A is duplicated. We can create a utility method that removes duplicates from a given input array. And all that it needs to do is to pass that array through a set and then return that iterable back into an array. And of course, for our input example, we get back the strings A, B, and C. We can also easily create a utility method to check if a given input array has duplicates by simply passing that array through a set and checking if the size of the set is equal to the input array length. Of course, for our particular example, it does have duplicates. And indeed, when we pass it through the has duplicates function, we get back the boolean true. In addition to removing duplicates, we can also use sets for finding the repeated items within a given input. We create two sets, one for the items that we have already seen, and one for the items that we have found are indeed repeated. Then we simply loop through the input, and if we have never seen this item before, we add it to the scene array, Otherwise, if we have seen it, then of course it is a repeated item and we add it to the repeated set. Once the loop terminates, all our repeated items will be in the repeated set and we can convert that back into an array by using the spread operator and that will contain our repeated items. If we run our original input with the duplicated A through find repeated items, we get back an array with that duplication pointed out that A is the only item that was repeated. A proper built-in implementation of the set data structure is truly something that makes JavaScript a modern programming language. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.